Welcome, everybody, to the Global Comic Safari October uh, Horror Special for Halloween. Yes. We are here with a couple of uh, guests this week. Matt is here with us, as always. Um, we've got uh, our returning guest, the horror guy, Pee Wee. <laughs> um, and a gentleman from the group that you guys uh, probably all know or have seen post, Celio. Uh, Dr. Uh, Jacob Gonzalez, welcome. A huge, Thank you. huge horror collector. I've yeah. seen your post. Oh, yeah. It is amazing. Um, I just want to take one second and thank our friends at CBSI Comic Book uh, your number one free source for comic book information, knowledge bases, databases, cover galleries, and investing advice. And also to our friends at Comic Barricade, uh, the best. Uh, equipment to stabilize, protect your collection, and just add some support. Use uh, CBSI Tales and get 10% off, and free shipping as always. All right, gentlemen. We're here to talk some horror comics. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, I know Matt and I have talked, but maybe um, tell us a little bit of how you kind of got into collecting uh, the, the international horror, um, uh, uh, Cecilio and, and uh, Josh. Uh, you want me? To, uh, okay, you can go first. T tell us just a little bit of how you kind of got into it. All right, um, I've always liked horror uh, from from uh, my my country, and then I kind of get started on this because I shared uh, a few of my horror comics in the International Horror House or House of Horrors. I, I can't remember the exact name. So Ernie told me the the moderator of the group told me that that was a Frank Frazetta homage. Of, of one of my comics I used to used to show there. And I said, well, I, I don't know the original illustration. Can you show me? And he, he showed me the, the original illustration and it was beautiful. So I said, well, I have, I don't know, thousands of horror comics. And he said, well, let's, let's see what you got. <laughs> and I, I started sharing uh, some of my comics, some of my Mexican horror comics. And I discovered a whole new world of, of, of comics uh, in, in the International House of Horror uh, and in the foreign community. So, yeah, I do enjoy Spider-Man, Batman, Superman, and all that. But horror comics, it's a whole nother world. I mean, there's literally, um, there's everything and anything. You, you, you can see chopped heads, uh, decapitated bodies, dismembered, you know, it's, everything and anything so that's why uh i i started uh on this on this area of comic book collecting it's kind of interesting that you got started in uh in mexico and didn't really know about the u.s books as much or and especially any of the other ones and and kind of stumbled in the opposite way of the rest of us of yeah going, oh when we used all these and then all of a sudden wait what are these strange books you're showing us yeah and you know i um uh, I think most people here are devoted to Marvel and DC comics and horror comics are kind of left to the side so you can get it cheaper and in better condition. So that's why I also travel there because, you know, I, I like most of us, we work on this on a budget. So you got to keep your, your, your wallet. You have to use it um, intelligently. Absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm not paying for your buck. I, I'm betting certain places, yes, you can. Other books, you know, in the American market, the the horror has went through the roof for some of them. But you know, definitely, there's there's sections that are still really solid value kind of buys. Yeah. All right, Josh. Well, how did you kind of get strung into this? Uh, well, mine started with American pre-code horror. I mean, that's what I gravitated towards before the foreign collecting. So once I started foreign collecting, I mean, it just kind of made sense. Like, hey, let's see, you know, if there's anything else out here. And I mean, there's there's a ton of it. So that's just been my main focus. But I've, you know, wandered off. I mean, I enjoy everything. It's just, you know, nothing is like horror 
or pre-code horror. I mean, it's just brutal. Yeah, you, yeah. you've you found some gems that I was like, oh god, I didn't know that it even existed. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, have you? You know, I know you you started in the Mexican comics. Have you kind of branched out into other an- international editions as you see them, or are you? How do you collect now? What are you? What are you kind of buying as as you go forward? Cecilia, I think he's. Yeah, um, I mean, I I guess I was asking, have you kind of branched out into other countries and, and bought um, other editions, or are you still kind of sticking within your own, you know, Mexican kind of comics? Um, no, well, yes and no. Uh, now that I shared some of these horror comics on different groups on Facebook, um, I get out of the blue somebody always saying, "Hey, I have these comics. You want them? I, I can I can sell them to you." So I'm always getting Mexican comics, but now that I joined, that I have joined uh, the International House of Horror and the foreign community, I'm starting to branch out to beside the U.S., Argentina, Colombia, Thailand has a ton of horror oh, yeah. comics. Um, Japan, uh, although it is manga, but they are really, they have really, really uh, incredible horror stuff. Um, they kind of have a thing for octopus and, and all sorts of uh, <laughs> weird <porn. laughs> tentacle kind of things. You yeah, know. they love that. Those tentacles, the more the bear, the more the It's bear. really weird. I mean, it's part of the, <laughs> of part of their culture, I guess. But, um, like for instance, here in Mexico, you can see in every, uh, horror, horror comic, a beautiful woman. That's kind of like our thing, you know, it can be either being chopped off, being kidnapped or anything, but there's always a beautiful woman on the cover. And in Japan, I've seen, you know, weird tentacle things or weird crustacean things crawling (laughs) from the sea. (laughs) Um, You know, Thailand has also really um, weird stuff there. Uh, Indonesia has some extremely graphic covers. The Indonesian horror stuff is is amazing. yeah, and I've also enjoying, uh, I've been enjoying uh, pre-code horror from the U.S. Like like uh, Josh said, they're really cool too. They're kind of expensive, but I think you can uh, find them or trade them. Uh, I've, I've traded a couple easy Bolt of Horror comics on the international group, and you know, uh, it's really cool. That's that's how you how you spend your time, you know. Yeah, it's it's interesting to kind of go, well, I've got these things that I've, you know, I'm used to. I want to get that thing that I've not had before and let's let's see if we can make a deal. Yeah. Um, so it, it it's a good kind of good route for the community cuz sometimes you just can't keep buying buying buying. You've got to kind of move or do other things. So as Josh looks away like like his uh his conscience is bothering him there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, we're, uh, so I just kind of want to talk about a little bit about just the general horror markets. You kind of give us some countries and some places you've seen uh, strong horror uh, elements from. Um, you know, we know Mexico has has a ton. Uh, Brazil has has been a popular oh, one. Oh yeah, Brazilian I know people horror. have talked uh, Indonesia some. I hadn't heard about Thailand much, but where where else is kind of you found pockets of um, horror? I know Josh has done a ton of research on this. Where where what other countries kind of maybe are off the beaten path that people wouldn't expect? Um, honestly, I really, as far as I've noticed, I wouldn't say like any, no, nothing shocking. I mean, Thailand was shocking. I didn't even know about that. So thank you for sharing that. But uh, I mean, you got the UK, which I mean, that's not surprising. Yes. You got Argentina, which, you know, yeah. I mean, that would, I would say Thailand was is the most shocking to me. Well, you had said Maybe Indonesia. Me. You told me about Turkey, and I was like, yeah, Turkey, Turkey, oh, yeah. yeah, Turkey yeah, makes sense pretty... to me because as uh, being kind of weird because it's you know it's a Muslim country, so you know that you, they're, they're, you they've got fairly you know, strong censorship. Exactly, right? and some of yeah. that Turkish stuff is mind blowingly crazy. Yeah, Turkey, Turkey's got reprints. As far as I know, it, no, nothing of, original uh, that you've seen. Nothing. I'm trying to think. Nothing original that I've seen. But I mean, okay. they they have. You know, as I've shared with you guys, they definitely have some uh, American pre-code stuff that they did over mm-hmm. there. That's 
ridiculously hard to find. Well, I think that's that's sometimes the difference too is when we're talking reprint material versus original material, and and that gets into the the the, the weird kind of cultural genre stuff that that you find when you get into the the um, creator stuff in that country, and you just kind of get the flavor for the culture going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I would. I mean, would you say Josh, the Philippine stuff is kind of kind of a trip? There's Not some really. Philippines horror. There's there's some older stuff, and I mean, unfortunately, I've just seen covers. I haven't seen interiors uh, at all. But I mean, their their stuff went from you know like the fifties till eighties, nineties. I've seen the interiors of like the eighties, nineties stuff, but it it was nothing like crazy mind blowing. Well, mm. so we, we've chatted a little bit. I think we should show some eye candy. You know, people came to see some some cool books, so. Uh, Cecilio provided uh, yeah. quite a few pictures to kind of go through, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pull those up on the screen. Just kind of let you talk a little bit about them. You know what 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 particular why why did you choose this book to share? What's what stands out? What uh, you know what what's the story you got behind it? So okay, go there. Cool. All right, this is uh, from La Prensa, one of the most famous uh, publishers here in Mexico. Uh, this is called El Enterrador. Uh, this one actually has Marvel uh, horror stuff from the 70s, I believe. Um, and that one is actually pretty cool because the word uh, enterrador means digger or, or enterrador is the person that digs the graves where huh. you put the bodies. Mm. Um, and as you remember, Marvel has a, a presentator or presentator, or what was the name? The host. Uh, it's called Gravely Pete Digger, the host of the Marvel, uh, I believe it was, I can't remember the exact name. So they took that name, Digger, and, and they, they translated literally as Enterrador. <laughs> and, you That's know, cool. it's, it's a really cool series because it has several, you know, Marvel key issues, like the one with the Cyclops just crawling up on, on the ice. Mm, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, tales of suspense, I believe. And, uh, it's really cool. That's a that's an interesting cover. I don't recall the U.S. version. I could be wrong, but I wonder if it's a an interior panel or something. Yeah, it's a, I... th let me do this. Uh, it's a it's a it's a U.S. original. It's not a it's not a Mexican. Even the cover is is from a U.S. Even the book? cover. Huh. Yeah. Just let me just. That... Could just be just uh, just enough different looking that it that it throws you off, you know. I think yeah. I think the uh, the title is what throws you off because when they, they did the title a little bigger, so they kind of chopped off the cover. That could be um, it. Is it just a different angle and it makes it look a little different? We were talking about this the other day in, in some Golden Age books where certain series, you know, the title bar takes half the cover, so you kind of when you move that graphic, it just makes it completely look different than the original yeah all right so the next one we got here hopefully there we go uh, oh, that's, that's the one we talked about that, that's yeah one that's the one i think okay. it's either uh, tales of suspense or weird tales or something actually uh i've had that like seven times <laughs> seven or eight times and i've sold each and every one of them because they're it's a really cool jack kirby uh cover and it's really, I think it's really cool. Yeah, that's a nice one. I mean, it's and that's a, a nice of, condition one. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's that's actually from my personal collection. I've always tried to keep the best looking one for myself. Well, that's 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 the way we all do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> buy two, yeah. buy two rough ones, sell one, keep the better one, and then find another one nicer and sell the rougher one. You know. Yeah. Cycle. All right, this one I recognize. Yeah, oh, this, yeah, that's Classic. actually that one, although it is from my personal collection, it took me about maybe five years to find a decent price uh, uh, copy. It is a beat up copy. I mean, there's there's some pieces missing on the cover, um, but it was it cost me about two hundred dollars. Really? Like that. Because it is wow. really, really scarce. It's a scarce book. Um, you can find it for 150, 180, 200 dollars. It's a good price, 
uh, anything above 250 it's you know way above but you know that kind of shows you how the mexican market is going up on prices yeah um, well different books are kind of valued differently because I, I mean that's a classic cover but i don't think it's nearly that expensive in the u.s edition because it's not as scarce you know it's yeah not a, it's not a scarce issue here but you know I, I can see how that's issue number one in that particular series so it probably is harder yeah. to kind of come by Cecilio, you know, Cecilio, yeah. can let's because we've talked about this before, but I, I, I'd love for you to mention this because I think it's interesting how because you said this is a tough book to find. You know, we've talked about how Mexicans were Marvel zombies and, and very superhero focused. So is it an accurate statement to say that some of the horror, the reason it is so hard to find is maybe it wasn't as popular books like this so that's why like say this la prensa is going to be harder to find let's say like a random film yeah. iron man issue for instance yeah that's that's completely accurate um right now spider-man from la prensa it's the biggest selling uh books you know the non-canon marvels uh from spider-man oh, yeah. and the horror stuff i've always uh said they have low print runs and most of them were discarded so when you're trying to buy a horror comic from La Prensa, it's going to be hard and it's going to be expensive. Huh. So um, La Prensa have been printing horror since the late 50s, the early 50s. I mean, 1952 is my earliest horror from La Prensa. Wow. So those are yeah. kind of expensive. I just found out that this is Tower of Shadows number one. Hmm. All right. Okay. This is. Yeah, from... I was going to say, I've, I've seen this enough. I, I, you know, the title just makes you try and figure out what you're looking at, but it, it, it's looks so familiar, but just enough different. When is you, it Neil Adams, John? Um, I think so. I believe. And the, the first one we showed is tower of shadows. Number two. Okay. The tower mm -hmm. of shadows. That's, you know, the late 70, the late sixties, early seventies, Marvel horror, uh, revival or something. I think I might even have this book somewhere in my collection. Just not mm -hmm. not the Mexican, but the American floating around, just because I picked it up somewhere. Well, this is. It took me a while to find the the Mexican version. I don't I don't know if there's any other besides the Mexican and the U.S. version. Huh. But this is mm -hmm. kind of like a. It, it was a grail for me back in the day. I can believe it. I mean, I the way some of these books are to track down, it's it's impressive. Yeah. All right. What's the next one here? Again, okay. this is uh, this is from. Let me show you. I, I I should build a database of all this information. It's the old uh, Marvel Monster Fifty stuff. Yeah, this is. Let me see. Uh, this is. I believe it's from the sixties, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see. Oh yeah, it is. Tales of Suspense from nineteen sixty. Okay. Ooh. This is Tales of Suspense. Pre, pre superhero kind of. Yeah. Ghost code That's, monster. Remember when they used to do all this uh, weird um, uh, sounding uh, monsters like oh, Gloom yeah. or uh, Thongor or maybe anything that kind of has this uh, sounding name like this one from, for instance, is Spore. Um, you know, it was before uh, Spider Man, X Men, Fantastic Four. They used to try all this, all these weird sounding names, and they just develop a story around the name. Well, this is one of those actually. This is Spore from 1960, and actually, this one, this is this is the second time we have this cover in Mexico. The first time we had it in 19, it was 1962, and then this one in 1969. Huh. So they kind of they they used it again for a for a different comic. And it's it's kind of like a, a thing we have here. Like they use a, a cover for one comic, and then they use it for another one. Maybe even a different title or a different series. They use reusing the the, the images. Huh. All right. That's cool. Even even La Prensa, which is a, a big a big uh, publisher here, they they used to do that too. Because you know when when we see this this kind of thing on the on this on the small the small publisher just say well they they take one image and they use it as much as they can just so they can get the better of it 
Uh, yeah. But but even La Prensa, being such a huge publisher, they used to do that too. This is Strange Tales number 73, featuring Grotu again, Grotu. another, another uh, uh, cool sounding name for a monster, Grotu. I, I really like, uh, I mean, I, I like how this one all just comes together. That title really, it kind of pops because, with it. Yeah, yeah, the original the original mm -hmm. cover, the this monster was yellow. So they mm -hmm. changed it to to a color to a red color. I think it's I think it works better oh, with yeah. the background and the title. I think it works better. Yeah, it definitely does. I, I it's one of those like like it doesn't quite look right, but I can't can't always place what's what's off, but that's beautiful. Yeah, and it's actually Green. This one wasn't that expensive. I remember correctly. This was kind of like a three dollar, four dollar book. Oh, really? That's cool. Yeah, that's super cheap, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, just what are people after? You know, what's what's the books they really, really want? You know. Yeah. All right. Oh. All right. Oh, this one. This one. Uh, Montrose. Uh, this, this one. The, the first collection I, I showed. Uh, or I wanted to share was a um, uh, Mexican version of U.S. books. Now, this is an indigenous Mexican book. This is 100% Mexican, both the cover and the interiors, the story. This is called wow. Monstros or Monsters. And the idea behind this collection is that they took a monster from wherever they want, and they develop a story around this monster. For instance, in this one, they're using a werewolf, and as I said before, a beautiful woman on the cover. <laughs> you can't go wrong with that combination, can you? <laughs> yeah. Nope. This is this is number one, and I think I've never seen this one for sale. This one wow. was. Oh. This one comes from a from another guy's collection, and he was having some money troubles or something, and he said, um, "You want it?" And I said, "Yeah, I can. I can help you with that." And so, yeah, I've never seen this, this one for sale. Huh. So is the, is the Mexican original stuff more scarce or less? I think it's more scarce than the U.S. comics, yeah, because some of these comics never even uh, surface to eBay or Mercado Libre. They're just locked up in personal collections. Huh. So wow. you're going to have to build friendships around these horror-themed uh, comics. So you can get this uh, extremely rare versions of uh, werewolves and monsters. Exactly, it's and I, I would say I would tell our viewers that Facebook group, International House of Horror, right? Yeah. Ernie's group, that's what it's called. Yeah. International mm -hmm. House of Horror. If you're interested in international horror at all, then you need to be a part of that group, or you're just doing it wrong. Yeah, yeah, because that's. Yeah. That's going to be where you're going to find uh, those people that are going to be, that are going to have the rare stuff, that are going to be interested in trading, interested in selling. Got to go be a part of that group, man. Yeah, because for instance, this one, uh, the guy that has this, that they used to have this comic and they, that they sell to me, he's not a comic book collector. He collects uh, all kinds of memorabilia regarding the famous monsters of, of, uh, oh. Of uh, the 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 late fifties movies like Frankenstein and, yeah. and all that, so the they so the monsters. the Universal yeah. monsters. That's what I was going to to say. Um, so he has almost the entire run, but since this was the most valuable piece, he said, "Well, I need some money. Can you help me with this?" Well, all right. So yeah, you can find comics like like this one, for instance, the ones you the one you're showing. For maybe ten dollars, twelve dollars, which is I think still affordable. Oh, yeah. um, mm -hmm. And again, you have a monster and a beautiful lady in his arms. You know. I mean, these are gorgeous. This yeah. has this cover Agreed. has, you know, the the monster. You can see a chapel on the back. Uh, you can see some ghosts. You know, all the all the basic horror elements that make a cover just stands out. And the illustration, the, the illustration of his face, of the monster's face, I mean, yeah, his face is jacked. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, that is, that is a gorgeous, gorgeous book. Yeah. This, these are all painted covers, you know. This yeah. every, every cover is a masterpiece. 
uh, why'd you guys do this to me? I wasn't going to buy any books. And now you're like, <laughs> oh, now I got to look for these. John was going to slow down, guys. He was making good choices. Down his body. <laughs> it's all bad. Don't, oh. don't, don't slow down. Come to the dark side. <laughs> oh, wow. We, we have comics too. That's, um, that's freaking sweet. That's amazing. That's actually one of my uh, favorite pieces of this collection, besides number one. Um, you know, the, the skull is beautifully painted. And, you know, you have the, the, the small box said, or, or, or I'm going to translate to you guys, what secrets do these ancient books keep? What spirits do they live in? What hidden words are living in this magical power? You know, kind of like a presentation for this this magic book yeah. and the dead people around it. You know, it's really cool. Yeah, it's super painted cool. covers are beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm kind of just finally looking at the title, and it's got whatever that you know monster as the T. That's beautiful. Oh yeah, every every letter is a monster. The letter M, it's kind of like a oh, werewolf. God, they all are. Oh, oh yes. shit! Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I I only caught the big one, but you're right. They're all snakes. And... That's cool. That's really yeah. cool. And the T is a monster opening his arms. You know, the T reminds me of uh, where the wild things grow monster went. <laughs> yeah, went, right. Got got possessed by a demon yeah. and really became monstrous. Yeah, that Love thing's it. crazy. Wow, that's yeah. super cool. Yeah, this is a really cool um, book. Oh wow. This is you know again a really cool cover. Um, the, the the what what strikes me the most about this cover is the 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 face of the she devil or the demon it's really it's really creepy you can't stare at it like more than 10 seconds because it gets under your skin it's really <laughs> you know if you stare if you stare at the picture soul. yeah it's really it's really something man i mean yeah yeah it's I'm, extremely detailed there in the eyes yeah very cool it's cool how like the, she's wearing like a draped type of material, and it just kind of blends into the into the mountain background. Or so. Like the way they did that is super cool. Oh yeah. wow, it's really cool. Do you have any do you have any dupes of that one, Cecilio? Ah, uh, nope. <laughs> this <laughs> one actually. Yeah, be I ready won't... for some PMs. I have a couple doubles, but not from this one. All right, so but this... I have a couple though. This title we've talked about before. Yes, Bartok. we have. Yes, Bartok. we've talked about yeah. Bartok before. Um, I, I believe Josh asked me what does Bartok translate as. It's not a. It's it's a personal name. Uh, it's actually the last name of a vampire, which works as a host for these stories. Uh -huh. And you know, it's kind of like Uncle Creepy or Cousin Eerie, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. where he pre presents the story and then you know shares some final thoughts. Well, um, this one actually went kind of like that one, but you know, this one, for instance, has uh, Satan's dog. That's what <laughs> the, the little words are, because you know, Satan is a it's a recurrent character in this on this uh, comics. We have Satan's wife, Satan's son, Satan. Now we have Satan's dog. What a cute because, puppy! Oh yeah, and you know. <laughs> It's uh, the background, what you see behind the dogs supposed to be hell, but there's some faces arising from it on, on the left side, uh, yeah. on the right side, and it's it's really cool. Now, Bartok are also kind of hard to find. You can get it from like between 20 and $35 each, and I think it's going to be a good deal. Um, you can you can spot some of those on eBay because, you know, they're they're really, really... Uh, striking cover. So uh, I've seen a couple on eBay going for maybe $70, $60, which is kind of affordable, but I wouldn't pay uh, above 40 which is, I think it's it's a decent price. Okay. So you're getting some um, education here, some buying insight. The pricing's crazy. Josh will pay it. <laughs> no, but, we, but you don't know what to pay. You don't know what's fair, what's not. It's so hard. Yeah. This one actually, yeah. this one is, uh, yeah, is uh, I have a double of this one actually, I think. Well, anyway. Uh, That's this, a cool one too. <laughs> this again features uh, a skull, you know, but this one actually has kind of like a cracked head, you know, like somebody took a shot at him. I don't know. 
it's a really cool cover too. The, the, that guy is exceptionally yeah. creepy in the background. Oh yeah, he's kind of <laughs> like um, Hannibal, Hannibal Lecter esque. Yeah, his yeah. Dead, dead eyes. Yeah. Oh, okay, this one we have shown before. This Woo! one we have shown before. That's why I wanted to show you this collection. This one, yeah. you guys did a show regarding the the foreign versions of this one. Of creepy and, seventeen, yeah. Yeah, and you know this cover, the 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 biggest modification they did for this cover was the chopped heads on the on the floor, and you know the the, the hot lady, but. You know, sadly, he's been chopped off. So, well, then this one's the one that's like a complete redraw, right? It's not the, yeah, that's man, yeah, because they remember, remember, John, we talked about how they changed his uh, his belt, uh, belt right. buckle, his belt buckle, yeah, the belt, they buckle. gave him a skull belt buckle on this one just to toughen him up a little more, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like he needed and, to be more tough. He's yeah, got yeah. a decapitated chick right in front of his altar there. Oh, yeah. goodness gracious. And you know, oh, I've I've also had, now he came back. That's actually the second part of the story you got mm. on on the first one, and you know it's a bigger axe, and you know it's kind of like uh, he's getting ready to to do his work. You know. Yeah, I think I I I I think she's probably in for the same treatment the other girl got. That's a yeah. much better drawn cover though. Yeah, yeah, because uh, you can see the the size of the 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 parts of the body has more. It's more um, accurate. I think it's yeah. really cool. Yeah, it's yeah. a little more detailed. The other one's a little bit yeah. dumbed down. Yeah, gorgeous. Oh, that is a that's a wonderful looking uh, vampire demon. Yeah, he is actually the count. Bartok, he is the, the count. Oh, he is the Bartok. Uh, that's the guy. That's the guy. And, you know, he's, this is a uh, uh, beautiful, beautiful cover based on this classic uh, depiction of, of the hero, uh, you know, holding the damsel in distress, like Superman when he's holding Supergirl, or oh, yeah. maybe Cyclops holding Phoenix. Um, they, yeah. they do that too. But this cover actually reminds me of another uh, from Marvel. That's the story is called I Vampire. I don't know if you guys have seen it, um, where the yeah. vampire holds like uh, a lady in his arms. It's, I think it's really cool. It's from the mag. It's it's a magazine, right? Isn't that yeah. a black and white magazine? I think I've seen it. I, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, and you know the one the one thing I think it's weird about this cover is the green color of his face. Yeah, but real. I, but I think it works again with the background and the lettering. I think it really is it's really standing out. It's an interesting take, but it does. I mean, the red background uh, it does it pops. Yeah. Oh my. El viejo. Oh my. El viejo. That's actually translate as the old man. Um, here in Mexico, we have it's kind of like a, a verbal tradition where when a kid is not doing his chores, he's not eating his vegetables or just being a naughty boy, my mom used to always say to me, if you're not, if you don't behave, an old man is going to come and get you. So the, the old man or el viejo, it's actually a yeah. tradition here in Mexico. So uh, this, this collection, again, it's indigenous covers, indigenous stories. And he's working again, like, Casiniri and Uncle Creepy, like a presenter of this of these stories, and the covers actually are kind of like a collage of many different things. You know, you you don't see a, a specific plane on every on every or a specific level. There's just a horror stuff just thrown around and kind of making it like a mix, a weird mix. But they yeah. work really good. The Devil Cat is really uh, creeping me out. Yeah, it's a cat that looks like a cat. Don't stare at it. No. <laughs> I'm going to make it go away. Oh, no. More devil cats. <laughs> more devil oh, cats. Oh, shit. That is a sweet, sweet <laughs> cover, man. Yeah. I love that. A beautiful woman. And we're a beautiful woman. And the, the face on the back. Yeah, it's um, awesome. Uh, it was drawn by Jose Luis Duran, the famous... Uh, uh, cover artist for the non-Marvel, the non-canon Marvel from Spider-Man. The Maestro. The Maestro. So 
it's a really it's a really good cover that's a gorgeous um, look yeah that's gorgeous this, you got any dupes of that mm, i might mine. i might have <laughs> josh is now like uh, building a mental list of things he's going to trade that other kidney for <laughs> You know, this one is actually not that expensive, too. Between $8 and $10 is a fair price wow. for this one. Oh, wow. shit. I Gorgeous. love it. That is a, yeah. The blue is just so striking, too. I love it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because the title goes black, and then they're all graded on the blue, the faded yeah. blue, too. It's it's really it's really Beautiful, cool. beautiful that illustration. Gorgeous book. Holy cow. Now, the next one, this one is a special cover because... Mexico, as you guys said on 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 before, Mexico is almost ninety five percent Catholic country, you know, and this book, this cover actually features a black mess. Uh, you see the 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 inverted cross right on, on on the top. Oh yeah. And and the black priest, and they doing some sort of chanting. They have a girl, a naked girl, laying there, and a carefully placed uh, I, candles. I love that. A carefully placed Very candles. Very carefully placed candles. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think when when this one was sold on on the newsstands, I think obviously it's gonna it's gonna turn heads and say, well, why wh what is this? Why are they selling this if we're Catholic? Uh, and you're gonna find this this strange dichotomy in our in our comics. For one, for on one hand we're really Catholic, and on the other hand we really enjoy this demonic. Uh, Cover so, yeah, it's really cool. We've talked about that. Remember that one? So Cecilia and I have talked on the phone a few times, and we'll have some some drunken conversations. But one time we talked about that uh, <laughs> that, that that weird dichotomy, that kind of duality. That duality where, where you're you're allowed to have kind of like this second life where you yeah. can pursue material like this, and you don't have to kind of beat yourself up for it. Whereas yeah. here, you know, and it's different than like we're here in America, you know, it's like more and more of, of the private life is being taken away as social media and everything yeah. you know, kind of shines a light on everyone's kind of uh, uh, history and whatnot. So I find that so fascinating that in such a Catholic country, this type of stuff is produced, sold, kept. And, you know, I, I, I think it's fascinating. It's fascinating. Mm -hmm. It yeah. really is. Wow. Oh, goodness. Oh, boy. Here we go. Um, this is, again, a local production. It's called Macabra or Macab. Macabre. I don't know how, how to translate that. Macabra. Like this macabre. one, like Macab, yeah. This one, actually, this is number one. Uh, this is a 50 maybe $40 book. It's not that expensive. <laughs> And it is beautiful. It's a beautiful naked woman, woman on, on, on the right on the cover, and this weird sorcerer or priest is dripping wax. So I don't know. It's kind of like a sexual vibe too. You know? yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? And I love how the book is floating in that fire, though. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. And and the title is super cool. Yeah, it's it's dripping blood. Yeah. I, I, very now, very cool. I actually, this one is in a top loader because I haven't had the time to send it to CGC or maybe or CBCS because it's a, it's a high grade copy of number one. So yeah. I hope to send it one day to, to CBCS and Love to you know, it in the it's, it's really, when you see it in person, it's really striking. It's beautiful color. Yeah, I can bet the colors are, it's my color palette. Oh, oh that's a speaking. That's a Speak very detailed zombie. Yeah. Speaking of toxic girlfriends. Oh <laughs> man. That's he needs that's to break up with her. <laughs> oh yeah. You you gotta let it go. You got sometimes you just gotta let go. Dude, is he is he tied to her? Yeah. Yeah, on he's, the bottom, the rope, he's like tied to her. Yeah, that's actually the, that's one of the stories portrayed inside the book. Uh, a girlfriend that passed away and he's not letting his boyfriend go so he straps to him and then they both go to the grave oh goodness oh wow so she takes him to the grave yeah she i'd be like him. you know what <laughs> our relationship has moved on to a new phase <laughs> yeah oh 
Oh, wow. um, chop wow. hands, you know. Mm. Um, it's really, it's a really cool cover too. Um, yeah. This one actually, they caught him stealing, so they chopped his hand off. Wow. Both of them. Crazy, crazy. Really cool. I think I have doubles of that one. Well, we, we can talk cool about one. it then. Yeah, this yeah. One is uh, now fun. this one for this one they changed the 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 title uh, to a black. Uh, color title and the background goes from from red to violet to almost white and really makes them you know stands out i think it's mm. it's a it's a cool change of of the coloring yeah i dig it it's got a a, a very interesting vibe it, when what when was this material made is it 60s 70s in mid 70s i believe 75 76 okay that makes sense i mean it just i felt like a 70s vibe on it yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's another oh, that's one cool. from the title. They're, you know, carrying this guy. Wow. You know, uh, th that that reminds me of this this palace where they're changing a coffin and they're just dancing. Just, oh, know. yeah. That, <laughs> meme, da, da, that da, video da, meme. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, that video meme. Wow, that is I just kind of, whoo. I'm just yeah, weird. Yeah. That almost feels later though, just the imagery. I don't know why. It feels like eighties hot job. It does. It looks like an eighties kind of indie movie. Yeah, it's yeah. got it's got an eighties indie horror feel to it. Yeah, it's really, really cool. But then you jump back and this definitely looks like the seventies. Seventies. That's this one cool. that that she devil, it's just I mean, it's a striking cover, you know. It's um, it's a banshee, I think it's the word. Uh, you know, a, a vampiress wow. haunting this guy. It's th that one, this one, actually was the first one I got from this collection, and it only costed, I think, two dollars, two or three dollars. Wow, three dollars! <laughs> Holy shit! So you gotta jump on it when you when you got a, a good deal, you gotta jump on it. Yes, yeah, yeah. That's a steal for three bucks. Jeez. Yeah. Oh, look at that. This Creepy. is the last one. This is the last oh. one I'm showing. Uh, the last collection. This is Museo del Terror or Museum of Terror. Of Terror. Um, you see the guys there. It's a repaint cover or it's a redrawn cover for Creepy Number One. Yeah, it is. That's so uh, bizarre. Fantastic. This is, this is this is an extremely extremely rare comic. I I've seen it twice for sale. A beat up copy and my copy, and I, I believe I paid again like two hundred dollars for it. Oh. Um, it's Worth a really, it. really, yeah. really, it's really scarce. I mean, you you can't find it anywhere. Well, that and copy you is find gorgeous. It, mm -hmm. If you find it, it's gonna cost you a lot of money. I that think looks this like is it came off the newsstand. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. This one I believe is around eight point five, nine point oh. It's a it's yeah. a high grade book, and it, it's again a holy grail of my collection. That's beautiful. Wow. And the next couple ones are Frank Frazetta's uh, repainted covers. That's so uh, weird that they redid them all. Wow. This is a, a beautiful Frank Frazetta's illustration, and they redid it for this for this collection. Now they change a little bit some of the positions of the of the body, but I think it it really works because the the moon, the orange uh, uh, coloring of the moon, really makes it stand out. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it's this beautiful. one and this is number two, and number three is actually another Frank Frazetta's uh, modified cover, mm -hmm. uh, where where the sorcerer is is actually uh, worshiping a dev a devil. And they they just the 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 cover artist just added the beautiful woman on the cover. What's this modified from? Is that one of the creepies? Is creepy number two? Okay. Uh, you know, creepy number. No, uh, I believe it's eerie. Eerie number two. Oh, okay, I got gotcha. you. Eerie number just... one. Eerie number one is a small digest size black and white uh, comic, and then the first eerie they did on a larger magazine size full color. Use this cover. Wow. That's Crazy. cool. It's another cool painted cover uh, from a vampire. I believe it's taken from an inside page of Eerie. Uh, 
I can't remember exactly right now, but it is it is really cool. All right, one last one to share. Last one, last but not least, this. This is the which, girl you do not want to find at your house. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, this is a creepy witch uh, preparing some sort of uh, I don't know, enchanting po po potion in the on the in the. This cauldron. I don't know. It's really, it's really something. Now she is before, really creepily drawn. Before we move <laughs> yeah. forward, yeah. Before we move forward, I want you guys to know that all of these uh, collections, all of these comics, you can see it on tbosfera.com. I work for this uh, platform in Europe. They they are devoted to um, the the study and distribution of Spanish comics. So if you see Tebeosfera, Tebeosfera. Uh, Tebeosfera.com, you can always Tebeosfera. see full galleries. I've created full galleries, and uh, I've shared yeah. most of my collection there. Well, shoot me that name, and I'll put it in the I'll put it in the description for the folks so that they can see it. So we'll we'll do that. Yeah, okay. link. That looks link. Cool. Yeah, okay, that cool. would be awesome. All right, those books were beautiful. Yeah. Now Josh is like, I don't want to show mine. How do you follow that? I mean, I, I don't even. We'll figure it out. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll show the one that I picked up that's new and just because just I want to show it. And that'll, that'll give Josh a little break. Um, I just got this out of, a, out of a deal with somebody else and I wanted to. It's actually probably not going to stay with me, but I, I love the werewolf kind of cover going on. Just nice. stealing. It I almost like looks it. like he's stealing the bride or the date. So. Yeah, that series is a cool series too. Classical stuff. Yeah, Culture. yeah, just a full moon background. But that's all I brought today because uh, I had to bring something. That's a good buy. That's a good yeah. buy. It'll make a great gift, dude. It looked it yeah. looked nice too for that all white cover. Yeah, yeah got, white cover. Of all places, I got it from Australia, so hmm. had to go. Weird. <laughs> what? That book was in Australia. <laughs> what? Well, yeah, <laughs> I bought it from an Australian. Oh, hmm, is so it Greg Blanche? You got that from Greg Blanche, probably. Yeah. So, so some of these books have traveled from Mexico to Australia <laughs> and back, and you know, gotta love it. I love it. I love all that cross pollination, man. Yeah. Each book tells a story. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna let Josh go, and then we can have uh, Matt kind of show what he's got left over at the end. Yeah. All right. Um. Uh, all right, Josh. Here we go. Here we go. We'll start with this. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I'm Brazilian. Yeah, so we'll start with Brazil. This is uh, the Almanac Cantos de Terror. This is uh, from 1955. It's from the second volume. And it's a Jaime Cortez cover. Can't Beautiful. Wrong there. Yeah. Jaime Cortez, man, that guy. Amazing yeah. illustrator. And yeah, it looks like in great condition for a 1950s book from Brazil. Yeah. Yeah, they... It's really weird, because you can find a lot of older books in really nice shape, but then, like, their newer books, you can't find a nice shape at all. It, it, make, <laughs> hmm. it makes no sense. That's so weird. So then we got this one from Brazil. Okay. okay. Almanac de Ogero Negro. Oh, yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, this is another Cortez cover. Oh, his style is just so cool. Yeah, this is from 1954. Wow. That's a nice one. Can I ask you how much you paid for that one, Josh? Like, how much does just a run-of-the-mill Jaime Cortez from Brazil in the 50s cost, usually? Um, Just, like, the regular books. Yeah. I mean, you can get those for... 40 50 60 bucks the That's the really almanac nice. the almanacs are the ones that run i mean depending on the shape i mean yeah 200 that's a, bucks 200 that's, bucks to that's a really thick book because that's like uh yeah wow. i mean it's, it's got to be 100 pages i don't yeah. know if you can see how thick it is yeah it's it's a big one yeah they're monsters that's uh, reasonable though i think between what it 60 is. to 200 for what it is yeah I think yeah for what reasonable. it is yeah so then we're going to jump over to the UK. Oh. Nice. So this this is Tales from the Crypt 1 that was printed over in the UK. 
Um, how, how do you tell the difference? So it's got the, I'm trying to show it without the glare if I can, the the ABC Miller logo right here. Okay. Oh, and then right. it's got, you know, the monetary Pence. value right there. Okay. Like I've seen the Canadian versions of some of the tails, but yeah. I've not seen a UK one before. So as, as far as I know, these are from 54, but if anyone knows, feel free to tell me. Are those <laughs> rare, Josh? Yeah, so you know how we had like the seduction of the innocent over here, uh -huh. um, and the Comic Code Authority and all that. So over in the UK, they had the CCC, which uh -huh. was the Comics Campaign Council, which was started by Dr. Simon Yudkin, who was part of the British Communist Party. Oh, weird. Yeah, and. Uh, he ended up getting a law passed in parliament that made it illegal to sell these books, like American pre-code horror books. Oh man. And, uh, Winston Churchill got involved. The archbishop of Canterbury got involved. Um, they actually tried to prosecute um, the American comic book companies for even selling the stuff over there. Huh. So crazy. I mean, I would say, you know, compared to what we had here, it was probably a million times crazier over there. This is number two, by the oh, way. Look at that. Gorgeous. From over there. Yeah, that's, that's one of my favorite covers there. <clears throat> that's a classic I mean, right there. If you if you go on eBay, you can find American pre code horror all day long. If if you go on eBay and you try and find like Tales from the Crypt or uh they had a couple eerie issues, they had one haunt of horror or uh the Haunt of Horror issue, a couple Frankensteins. It's insanely harder to find these. I've seen this copy and one more for sale in the past year. And I've only seen one of the number one Tales from the Crypt for sale over the past year. Wow. There's, there's only, as far as I could tell, there was only three of the Tales from the Crypt number one on the CGC census. And the highest one was a 3.0, so not easy to find in nice condition either. Let's see. This was a recent pickup. I know oh. some of you guys oh, saw Oh, that's this. pretty. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Damn. Yeah. This is the uh, Strange Fantasy one. 9 from Fawcett, 1953. And this one was printed in 57 by La Prenza. Gorgeous. Yeah, that's that a beautiful is awesome. Eee, to, for Prenza's in mid grade from the fifties. Yeah, that's, yeah. You not you don't see them. Yeah, and that's a gem. I, I figured I'd, this is probably like my favorite from the Mexican oh, side. Yes. This, is, this is number one. You're yeah. killing me. You're killing me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cecilia's yeah, gonna have a heart attack. Yeah, this is number one of the Cientos de Brujas. Um, as far as I know, it's it's a Witch's Tale 1, which is from 1951. And as far as I know, this is from 1951 also, but correct me if I'm wrong. That's just what I could find. Yeah. You have a double you have a double number one there, uh, Josh. Uh, this is this is I Cuentos wish. de Brujas, Cuentos de Brujas number one, and it's actually the first comic ever printed by La Prensa. Oh, is it really? No way! No yeah. way! It's Did not know that. Grail. That is awesome. Holy ho shit! That's a holy grail. The first ever comic printed by La Prensa was that one. Well, you just oh blown our minds. God. Yeah, that just blew my mind. I had no idea the person I bought it from. I don't know if they knew that either. That's that's why I that's why I'm telling you, you're killing me, Josh. You're killing me. Cecilio, in Mexico, how much is that book uh, traditionally? I think you can, I don't know, maybe four hundred, four hundred and fifty dollars, something like that. And then I have. This that's a one. big. That's a big boys book. <laughs> Damn. Oh, nice. This one's in like a messed up bag, so it's not, not I'm as gonna, pretty. I'm gonna have to call nine one one. He thinks he stole his stuff. Uh, I forget what this is in America. I just grabbed this from a random stack somewhere, but it it is a witch's tales cover. A random stack. I would I would 
ah, damn, I, I, I should have those on a, on a, on a pedestal somewhere, you know. <laughs> you and you have it on a random stack somewhere. I know. I, I'm slowly bagging everything. It's it just takes so much time because I try so much and, at once. I try and yeah, well, I bought way too much, and then trying to you know, I look through every issue just to see what's in there and try and like catalog see it. if it was made in America or where, and it it just takes forever. So mm. I'm slowly going you're, through. You're, it. you're doing the archaeology of it all. Yeah, yeah, the research. It's important. Yeah, I got a a big post I'm gonna make later about some books that I figured some stuff out in that's pretty neat so cool that's what i brought for today all right oh, man that's beautiful that's enough that's enough so you're gonna get <laughs> <me a particle. laughs> yeah how am i gonna follow that up well you you did a good job well, yeah I, you did now I how am i, I gonna know. follow that shit up i didn't know that that was the first comic ever printed by laprenza that's crazy that's amazing cecilia that that that's blew a, my mind that's a major major book you know it's uh, most most of us would would love to have one copy of those. Wow, beautiful! All right, Matt, we're gonna let you uh, show what you got here. Ramble on! I'm gonna fly around. Nah, okay, we'll be quick. Cool so, shirt, by the way. Oh yeah, where did I get the Kaliman shirt? Mi camisa de Kaliman. I got it from Cecilio. Thank you, Cecilio. Representing. <laughs> Represent. So right. See, we talked we, about this. We guy. talked about this. Yeah. And, uh, we did this on our show, on our Creepy 17 show. This is the Korku, and it's that weird kind of mashup that they did. So you got the Santillian Vampirella looking lovingly at our uh, executioner here. And when we did that show, this one for me was like, I got to find one. Our buddy Ilka, Ilke in Turkey found me one. I was like, got to have it, got to have it. It's a cool book. Um, I have some other, you know, like the Clock Post de Terror. Um, I had, oh, I yeah. actually got a group of these uh, in that, Albuquerque. Go ahead. That, yeah. that one that's on in your right hand, that's a EC book. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what, what did we say it was? It was uh, Tales from here. I brought it up because I was looking it up. It's uh, Tales from the Crypt 38. I'm actually I'm actually building that set. I have five different versions of that one. Ah, right. yeah, it's cool. I have the U.S., I, the Mexican, the Spanish, the Danish one. I nice. Have a lot of, That's awesome. You have you have this one though, right? Yeah, I have three copies of this one. Oh, <laughs> you might be able to you might be able to find some buyers like oh, me. Yeah. Oh, look at you. Danish Drac won. And, you know, the Danes really put some thought into uh, their Marvel horror when they were doing stuff. We we talk about it all the time. I just recently bought my Ghost Rider Chopped Woman book up. Sorry, John, for stealing that before you got it. Um, That's what I get for not being on social media enough. Yeah, I, I know. I, I knew when I bought it, I was like, I wonder if John was going to want one of these. But. Um, what I love about this book, though, is the freaking, like, kind of vintage portrait of Drac. I just love that. That's just so <laughs> cool. I love it. And then, the, and then the, the cool titling that they did combined with the classic Neil Adams. I like the purple. It's just wonderful, wonderful book. The, I, I love the, the Danish books. Um What is oh, that? Yeah. This is the uh, sure Frankenstein. Former, Frankenstein one, but it's the former Yugoslavian Dennis. Huh. Uh, you know, they're the big Yugoslavia, books, like they're, magazine size. They're magazine sized, and they handled the art really well. Um, and the reason it's Dennis is because this title originally was a bunch of Dennis the Menace stories, and then they oh. broke. Then they they started doing other stuff, Marvel horror and. Uh, Western stuff, but they kept the title, which I always thought was kind of weird. Um, <laughs> but great book, great condition too. Look at that. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, Amazing. I, that was another one. I thought about doing a Frankenstein one set, but I just, I don't know. I, I already have so many sets going. Don't, and I'm don't, don't do it anymore right now. Not to finish them. Oh, okay. look at that beauty. So Man, again, another heart attack. 
Cecilio. <laughs> so are you saying this could be the third La Prenza book ever printed? Uh, yep. Wow. So this is The Witch's Tales 2. But what makes this one special is it's a Harvey file copy, baby. Wow. Oh, wow. Cannot. I mean, when, when, I, when I realized that and I bought this book, I was like, I got to have it. I, I, I didn't, you know, I don't normally do horror, but I mean, the black cover, look at that. It's gorgeous. It's a high grade copy. And it's high grade. If, 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 if I had a horror book that I would put into a slab, this would be it. Yeah. I would get this one. Definitely. Definitely. Um, awesome, awesome. And then last but not least, if we're going to talk about horror and we're going to go to DC and we're going to talk about these two bad boys here. Oh, look at you. Yeah. You know, Wrightson, Wrightson to me is he, he embodies the horror illustrator to me. And now the sad thing about these two books, these are my two favorite swampy covers, but the sad thing about these is they were pulled from a bind. So they're trimmed all the way around. So that makes me cry. Yeah, you take what you can get when you're collecting uh, yeah. off the I mean, grid. I, I've cried. Heather Joe has had to hold me as I cried about it. <laughs> but, you know, having any copy. Cecilio, how tough are the Swampies to find? These are really tough to find. I don't have that one. And I, if I've seen it, you know, maybe once a year, once every two years, they pop up. Yep, and, and it gets back to that thing. You know, we've talked about it. In Mexico, they were Marvel zombie superhero obsessed. So DC got kind of second th second kind of tier. And so a lot of the DC horror stuff, a lot of the DC stuff just period is hard to find in Mexico. Yeah. So for me, I, even though they're trimmed copies, they, they found their forever home. Unless I can upgrade, they're staying with me forever. Yeah. All okay, right. so I, I have a question. What what was the second series that Loprenza ever produced? The second series, I believe it was maybe it was a kids a kids comics, maybe I can remember right now. But um no I can't remember right now. I can I can really tell. Maybe oh, Dick Tracy. I, I think Dick Tracy started on 52, 1952. Uh, Dick Tracy. Okay. I have okay. almost the entire run of Dick Tracy. I'm, I'm starting from number four through 91. So oh, wow. Number four is from 53. So I believe uh, number one should be from mid-52 something. Do so you have a number one? one? Oops, sorry, Josh. I don't know. You're fine. I was just going to say they started with horror and then went to Dick Tracy. Yeah, that's an interesting job. Yeah. Do you, have, do you have a number one, Cecilio? Dick From Tracy? Dick Tracy, no. I have number four. Okay. I have number four. Number one, I've never seen it for sale. Never, ever, ever. <laughs> really? And okay. I and I have I well I the one from La Prensa it's kind of hard to find. I've ha I've found. Um, the ones from Paquito, which are from 36, 1936 mm -hmm. through 1939. I have several of those. Uh, but from La Prensa, they're really, really scarce. Huh. Mm -hmm. So that's that's weird, right? You have you, you can get a 1936 book, but you can't mm -hmm. get a 1952 book. That's yeah. kind of weird. Yep. Well, just market trends and just different publishers and where did it get distribution? I mean, all those things play in it. And, and, you know, we understand the American market, but just uh, dealing with even just Latin America and all the different markets down there, there's so many different factors that contribute to what happened, where they ended up and why. Yeah. yeah. All right, gentlemen. I, it was a great discussion. I, I'm like going to have to go home and cry about the books I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, uh, I'm also we, gonna I'm, I'm gonna hit the hospital to get some nitrous oxide on on my heart because <laughs> you know Josh, Josh, you really you you won the internet today, sir. <laughs> he didn't even know it. <laughs> I uh, didn't even know it. 
Josh oh, has man. an amazing horror collection. He is the yeah. horror guy. And when you see him in, dressed up as Pee Wee Herman, it's horrifying. <laughs> horrifying. <laughs> I'm so, sure it is. I'm good. Thank you, Cecilia, for joining us. We appreciate you sharing, you know, the, just the thank amazing you. books that you have and a little bit of history and dropping some knowledge on us. Josh, thank you as always. always. Matt and I, you know, we're just here for the ride on this one. Yeah. You guys, you guys did all the driving, so <laughs> I appreciate it. We hope you all enjoyed the uh, Global Comic Safari Halloween, Halloween Horror Special. special. Halloween Horror Special. We should yeah, do this yeah. more often. We should do this more often. We, we maybe we should do more horror specials, but this yeah. is the only Halloween horror special. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the cool. first. This is the first one too, guys. So you know, yeah. many more to come years later. All right, thank you all, and uh, we'll uh, see you all real soon. And again, check out our friends at comicbookinvest.com. <laughs>